guys and gentlemen, uh, we're going to open this meeting uh, for the uh, continuation of the public hearing for the um, certificate of appropriateness for Criterion 186 Summer F. Uh, we have representation from Criterion here, and we have the uh, uh, Historic District Commission, and we're going to uh, proceed. Um, first of all, we're going to open up and let uh, Criterion present its uh, proposal. Then we'll take public input on that, and then we will have uh, s some exchange of questions and answers um, between the floor and the boards. And then we will proceed to have a uh, dialogue between the two parties. Okay? If it would be more convenient, if you'd like to set up closer, it would be better. Uh, anybody cannot hear me, let me know and I'll use the microphone. Thank you. All right. Mr. Blodgett and uh, members of the Commission, good evening. Uh, just to remind you, my name is Kenneth Margola. I represent Criterion Child Enrichment Team. And we have here uh, Bob Littleton, who's Executive Director, President of the Criterion, Mike Maxwell, Architect, John Benavis, also Counsel and uh, John Williams in the uh, audience from uh, Mike Maxwell Architects. As, as before, uh, Mike Maxwell is going to give the primary presentation. But I, I want to just restate a couple of points we made on the first evening and explain what you're going to hear this evening. As, as, as we pointed out, uh, Criterion, first of all, would love to be accepted and desired for its very important work on this street. We do have a right to be here as a non-residential use by statute in Massachusetts. But we also listened last week to members of the commission. Uh, Mr. Blodgett, members, we got, although you didn't tell us how you would vote, we got a strong message that you were concerned about the size and the bulk of the addition. And we took that very seriously. And uh, Criterion uh, and Mike Maxwell's uh, firm uh, and program people have been working very hard and very intensively to see if we could meet the concerns of this commission. We believe we have. Uh, we believe we have significantly. What you're going to hear tonight, see tonight and hear tonight, is uh, a new addition. It is 24% less in square footage, so it's a significant reduction. Uh, it is shortened by 13 feet and two inches from what was presented uh, on evening one. In appearance, uh, it's even more dramatic because of the extra space between the addition and the barn. And I think when you see it and understand and remember that we are saving uh, the historic house we are saving the historic barn. Uh, I think it would be very difficult to conclude that this new proposal uh, doesn't fit in the historic district or the neighborhood. And one of the things we wanted to do, um, and Mike and Axel again will be doing this, but uh, we, we took some aerial photographs because we wanted to get, uh, and you'll see uh, several of them, we wanted to get uh, more of an overview of how Criterion's proposal will fit in the neighborhood. And the fact of the matter is, that even as stacked up to residences, we don't stack up very badly. Uh, remember last week or the, last night with the, the original proposal, we showed the lot coverage and we were, I think, 10 out of 24 properties. And then Attorney Miara said that we do a uh, floor area ratio. And we did that, and, and Mike Maxwell will go over that tonight. We stack up even better, and that's what the original addition proposed, and it was seven out of 24 problems. So if we, if we have any kind of objectivity, uh, we do very well, even with the original proposal. But with this new proposal, uh, I, I think, and I, I hope and pray that you will agree, it not only is meets the concerns of the commission, but it's gonna look beautiful and fit in the neighborhood. So if, if our presence here and the fact that we're doing something non-residential, helping these little children who need help. If that's not the objection, I believe that you're going to be very pleased with what we propose. And just to, to 
give people a sense of context, the house <coughs> next door, uh, the, as, as Mac will, will show in more detail, it's 132 feet long, the house, the barn, lean to structure, which is longer than the new proposal will be. We're just not out of proportion in size, so I'm going to let Mac Maxwell uh, do his presentation, give you context, and, and go into detail about the significantly reduced addition that is now before you. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank the Commission for meeting with us again. Uh, we, we want to orient you to this is 186 Summer Avenue, and the lot goes all the way back. This is the parking lot that we're all parked in this evening, and the lot goes back comes along the back of the Temple Street properties and cuts back and then comes along this tree line. Then we come all the way across Summer Avenue and we go back again and we have a little dog lake here at the corner of the uh, school property. So what Ken was just mentioning that our original proposal was to take the shed and the breezeway off the rear of the house and put our addition here. And the proposal we're going to show you this evening is 24% smaller in the addition, in the square footage. Um, but our length in the original proposal was 130, 31 feet from the front of the house to the back of the addition. And the adjoining property from the front of the house to the back of there's a house, an addition, a barn, and a lean-to, that's 132 feet. So we have always thought that our proposal was within keeping with some of the dimensions around the neighborhood. John, if you want to move to the next. So we've simply spun around, and here's our house. This is the shed and the breezeway that we want to remove. We want to put our addition in this position. The barn remains. And this is the back parcel, as we've been calling it, uh, which is part of this overall parcel, which is of this size. And then this is the house I was just describing, which is house, addition, barn, and lean-to. And so we are going to be, uh, in our new proposal, 118 feet from front to back, from this point to the back of our addition, opening up quite a distance of 28 feet between the end of the addition and the front of the barn. So we've just spun around a little further. Um, the, the, the back lot, the barn, the shed, the historic house, the neighbor, uh, and then the school property over on this side. Okay, uh, go ahead. So, we, at the request of the commission, we did a floor area ratio. Uh, and the difference between the floor area ratio and the uh, lot coverage is the lot coverage is simply the buildings that are built sitting on the property compared to the size of the lot. The floor area ratio, if you'll bring that chart up, John, is to take all of the occupied floor plates uh, and to, um, well, this is, this is fine. Mike, is this the original proposal? Or the new this is the original new proposal, so we have not, we did not recalibrate this today. So what we, what we did is literally go to the assessor's property cards for all of the properties and then work with our addition in the original square footage. And we took all of the occupied floors, so for us it's the first and the second floor of the house and the addition, um, as we did for every other house, the occupied space, we took that floor area and divided it by the property size. And what happens is we move from about the middle in the lot coverage, we were in the middle range, sort of right on the average. And what happens is we move up quite a bit in the floor area because we have a large lot and because of the size of the proposal. So the floor area ratio is also in keeping with the neighborhood. As you can see, there are many houses. Uh, this is rank order with, of course, the other protected use, the Unitarian Church being the largest uh, at 0.44. The smallest on the street is 0.083, and we're at 1.135, so that's that ratio. And that's very common in zoning ordinances that you see that um, Cambridge has 0.75 and 1.0. Uh, when you get into urban areas, you'll find at floor area ratios of 2 and 3 are permissible, but in uh, neighborhoods like yours, it's, it's 
quite common. Uh, you don't have a floor area ratio in your zoning code, but again, that even the church and the largest of the houses are below 0.5 FAR. So that shows the context of the neighborhood. Um, one of the things that you asked for was also that we talk to the structure engineer about exactly what he was recommending <coughs> for the barn. And I have a letter which I will uh, leave you a copy of, but I want to read you um, just a few things that he said about how the barn would need to be shored up. And we gave him two alternatives. The one was simply to stabilize the structure, and that would be an occupancy category one, an unoccupied accessory building. And his recommendation is that we would need to remove the tree trunk posts, which are in the basement, uh, and replace with new steel posts on new concrete footings, and that the existing rubble and masonry foundations pointed up, and a new slab, it's a dirt floor, a new slab poured on grade to keep the moisture at a minimum, uh, and then that any rotted siding or missing clapboard be installed, and any missing or damaged windows be repaired, again, to make the structure watertight. That's what he suggests if we are stabilizing the barn for future use. If we were to use the barn immediately for the educational storage on the first floor only, it would increase the occupancy category to two. Everything that I just described for the, uh, the stabilization of the barn would be, need to be done. And then the first floor framing would need to be strengthened for a higher gravity load. And that would mean sistering all of the joist um, and adding additional columns and footing in the basements uh, and to shorten the span of the existing floor girders. Um, the exterior walls would need to be braced, uh, probably uh, for seismic and wind loading, probably with diagonal bracing cut in on the inside, but that we could save the exterior um, clather with that kind of uh, uh, repair of the barn. So the second thing I described, and here's a copy of his letter from Red Row, the second I described was if we were to uh, increase the, uh, the use of the barn uh, to storage from the existing. I also have copies of the lot coverage that we talked about last time and the floor area calculation that we've done. So, Mr. Margolin described we've, we've changed our proposal, we've lessened the proposal uh, in response to your, um, to your request and what we've heard from the neighborhood and from the commission. And so this site plan is our revised uh, proposal to you, and I have copies of that, and I apologize for those of you who can't see the screen clearly. Uh, I'll walk you through what we're doing. The existing house remains, and we'll show you blowouts. I want to orient you with this plan. The connector is slightly shorter by about a foot, uh, but we'll be now be using the connector as the main entry to both the house and the school. Um, we've been working with Jack Sullivan, who's not with us this evening, but about we would have to revise a little bit of the grading to make this work, but he believes that it, it is significantly in conformance with what he's already engineered. The existing, the addition is quite a bit smaller uh, than we had. We brought it, if you see this dotted line, this is the old outline of the proposal we had, and now we've brought it in quite a bit. The barn remains in its existing configuration. The playground is in the same position it was behind the barn, and all of the parking and driveway is the same with the increased snow storage and moving more of the parking to the north side of the site. I'll give you a little more detail of this. So, this is the original proposal with the original front facade, the south facade along the driveway entry, where the door was in the middle of the uh, addition, the connector was serving as an egress for both buildings, and we had an accessible ramp from the sidewalk level up to the stoop of the original house. What we've done is, and you can see this by, these are aligned on the front edge and the barn was right on top of each other, we have shortened the building. Uh, we have kept the two gable end facades, but we have uh, taken a corner out 
here to lessen the mass of the building. We've shortened the building. We've shortened the connector. We've gotten rid of the center entry. So we've been able to, much of our square footage has come out of being more efficient with the circulation by coming in at the middle of the building and then one would turn left to go into the old house and right to go into the new addition. This was originally 15 feet between the face of the barn and the face of the addition, and now we're at 28 feet, two inches between the end of the addition and the beginning of the barn. Okay. So just to show you how we've done this on the inside of the building, we've taken the center hall out. That is uh, about seven, uh, almost eight feet of shortening the building. And then we have squeezed the classrooms as far as Criterion feels is comfortable, um, respecting their obligation for class size and square footage per student. Uh, and we've moved some of the ancillary functions that we had here, trash and recycling and uh, computer room, the uh, uh, communication network room, electric room, we've moved that down to the basement. Um, what we propose is that we'll do a full basement under the entire building now that it's smaller. Uh, we were going to do a half basement, but we feel we need the space in the basement and it will make the building uh, a bit easier to construct. And we've shortened this to, it's a little over 11 feet, it was 12 feet before the connector. So the, the advantage to us is moving the entry closer to the street uh, we have a little less grade to deal with, so we get out of, uh, John, if you go back one for a moment. Yes, what, what, we, what we've been able to eliminate is this ramp, and we're simply now proposing to move the stair so it aligns with the door in the existing house that's way over here, offset, and we're not exactly sure how or when that happened, but the entry door is here, and we want to move the stair from this end of that porch to that end of the porch, but it allows us to get rid of the bulk of this ramp and also the ramp, this was a, a ramp as well to the front door and we, because we're not trying to enter this far down the site and here we can do this with a sloped walkway um, and we're quite comfortable that that will work and meet accessibility. Okay, John. The, uh, if you go to the, the second floor, essentially mirrors the first floor and here we have the third classroom in the gross motor room, uh, folding partition, which gives us a little more flexibility for the smaller room sizes. Again, we've taken some of the ancillary space out of the uh, second floor as we did on the first. And again, my dotted line is showing you our old footprint <coughs> that was 2,800, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yes, 28, 60 per floor, and now we're down to 24, I'm going to get this wrong, it's 2474 uh, for both floors. So we moved from 5620 of the addition and the connector, uh, we moved down to 4274 feet, increasing that distance behind uh, and still respecting our, our zoning requirements. Okay, John. Uh, the roof plan, again, it's simply the roof is smaller because the building is smaller. Uh, one of the things we've, we've tightened up on these gables a little bit, they're a bit smaller than they were before, and we've added a gable to the back of the building, uh, and that will allow us to get that back facade a little more relief and a little more fenestration, okay? So this is looking straight on at the house, uh, the historic house with its porch, the cupola, the back, uh, gable end of the rear part of the house. This is our addition in the same position, and this is the barn in the same position. So this relationship doesn't really change much on this side. The barn is where it always was. Uh, we're proposing the same. And this is the image of what you were seeing before uh, with the smaller, shorter gables in the front. We've got another notch here where we pulled this stair back a little more, so we've reduced the mass of this. We're still able to keep this roof at about two feet under the highest roof of the historic house. Okay. So moving around the building, this is now the north facade. Uh, and so the connector remains the same. This is the single gable on the back. Uh, and then the lift will be in this position. Uh, and then the restrooms, the adult restrooms there, the stairs over at this end, and we can get these windows in. So you can see the old facade 
extended all the way to this line, and now we've brought it back uh, by this uh, additional 13 feet. The rear elevation, this is the one that faces the barn. Again, the whole profile is a bit smaller. Uh, we brought it down, and we're able to animate the end because this is now a classroom on the end, so windows make a lot of sense. And this is the stairway, and that would be a, we put a window on the landing simply to get a little more animation in that rear facade. So, uh, go back two images, John. One of the things the board asked us to do was to look at putting a little more fenestration and a little more detail on the building. So we've got two options beyond, this is the one that we propose, uh, the one that we're most comfortable with. The existing house has the most ornamentation with the bracketed architraves and the applied molding to the windows. Um, this is a more simple, we've got a sample of a, of a window for you to look at and we've got the trim material as well, that we would do this in a fairly simple way. And if we went back to the existing house, the existing shed, you'll see that that's exactly how that shed is detailed now. There's white windows, a plain stock trim around the windows, a plain white door, plain trim around that, leaving the house to shine and the secondary structure to be more simple. So this is the proposal that we are most comfortable with. Okay, we go forward to John. So what we did here and is, um, and we may want to just blow this up a little bit, John. Just this area right here, if you can do that. There you go. Fine, perfect. So here's the detailing of the existing house, the connector, and then this is what would happen if we put those shouldered architraves on the <coughs> addition. That we could do it. Uh, we could add them on there, but now, John, if you'll back up a little bit, um, it, it sort of makes it look a lot like the house. I feel almost too much like the house and that we're not respecting the, the historicism of this building. Um, so I think we've got another view of the back. Is that correct? Yes, so doing the same treatment in the back, again, it, it gets a little bit more visually busy. We've also added the, uh, the brackets that exist on the existing house. Uh, we could add those to this house as well. But again, I, I, I know it's personal preference, but in general, it seems like this is a lot to do on this addition. Uh, and we're not sure that it's the right answer, but we'll let the board help us with that discussion. And then we were also asked to look at a flat roof. And so we did that. And again, this is our least favorite of the alternatives, which is a taking a flat roof, keeping our same second story, uh, and the front of the building has to come up, and we need to pitch slightly to the back. John, if we go to the next image. Um, so basically, the roof is sloping down, but we felt that a parapet coming around at a constant level was sort of the best way to do this. Um, I know there was interest in seeing this, I, and I also know there's precedent in the neighborhood. There's a 3,000 square foot cabana about a block away that is a single story and has a flat roof. Um, and that building is hidden by the old the historic house in front of it. Um, so this is our least favorite option. And John, if you want to go back and look at the other two options again. So this is with the increased decoration to match the house. And this is the more simplified matching more of the existing shed and breezeway. So we'll move forward on this. And we've got a rendering. We've got, and we'll, we'll blow this up so you can see it, but I, I have the two together. This is the proposal we brought you last with the larger addition and it covering part of the barn. And this is the reduced footprint that we have today and our proposal in front of you is that we would do this and the increased distance gives us a gap in between. We lose the center hall and the entry there. We use a, a sloped but not so steep as to have a ramp so we don't require handrails or guardrails to get into the center of the building and then we can rebuild the stair to the historic porch, a much smaller construction than the ramp that we had before, which again required handrails and guardrails to make that happen. Mac, I just want to make one point just sure. before you leave those pictures. There will be landscaping uh, all in yeah. front of, of the uh, 
the building. Just like the, the uh, rendering doesn't show it, but you right. should understand. Well, what well, we're showing, and I think we've got both of these images. Um, I didn't want to put, we've got the trees that have been approved by CBDC. There's seven ginkgo trees that we would be planting here, and then another five or seven on this side of the driveway. But they somewhat obscure the house, which was not the purpose of this presentation to do that. But what we're showing is that we would be, we would have a fair amount of lawn area, the lawn area repeats what's there now, and then we would have planting beds in front of all of these sections. And this plan, a little bit smaller, a little bit uh, more compressed, gives us a little more ground area to landscape in front. Okay, John, if you want to. And let's go to the tree one first, which I know is the second image, and then we'll come back to the one without. There we go. So we've ghosted in these trees the way that we they're on the landscape plan that's been approved. And so basically we get a single tree and then a double tree, and then we have four trees along this portion of the of the building. And so this, this is what we think they'll look like when they're planted, and we know that they will grow. I, I happen to live in a neighborhood that has some 65-foot ginkgos. So uh, ultimately, those ginkgos probably won't get as big as the mature trees that are behind, but all of this tree is not just uh, rendering. It is, in fact, the trees that are on the site. If you want to go back to the aerials, we can sort of show how that works. But now, John, to just go back one image to the uh, to the, to the rendering without the trees. <coughs> so this is that, that same rendering, and it shows you a little better about how we're able to uh, put the stair to the old house back in front of the opening. Uh, this is that walkway that would get us into what would now be our day-to-day -day entrance. Uh, and then the space between the building, the addition, and the barn. So um, that's what we've brought of this proposal. You have copies of it as well. Um, it's up to the desire of the board whether you want to uh, see and touch and hear what materials we've brought in, um, or we can leave that for later this evening or another day. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I'm going to open up for public input um, because it's a new uh, proposal entirely to us. And then uh, the board will have some questions also. And so we'll try and follow through on you. Mr. Blodgett, one more point we want to make. We want to show. Uh, Mr. Maxwell uh, wants to show the point of where the existing addition would fall with no change in the, so get the existing percent. breezeway is about to this position, and then the existing shed is to about this position. So if you want to go back and look at the aerial, we can the aerial the photograph that shows the house, uh, we can do that. Um, uh, I was going to the side, John, you can go down a couple. There you go. So our breezeway is to about there, and then that first bay of the house ends there. 28 feet, the back of our addition is down there. I think it's a very good point that, that our addition is, is probably doubling the size of this addition, uh, but it's, it's still leaving another third of the distance between here and there. So our distance between the front of this building and the end of that would be 118 feet. And if you back up a little bit, John, you can. And as I said, just for comparison, from here to here is 131 or 132 feet. So we're we're going to be smaller than that in the context of the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments. Yes. Okay. 
Is there any change in the projection of the addition from the prior proposal? Um, it's a very minimal one, John. If you go back to the to the first floor plan. So this was the old this was the old front facade line and we moved back just slightly uh, a few a few inches uh, probably not a foot and on the back what we've done is we were built right up against the 30 foot line consistently and what we've been able to do is to offset by about 12 to 16 inches uh, and that gives us this gable on the back side of the house A question about the trees. Um, the ginkgos, as you know, are male and female. Yes. And uh, some of them have stinky little. This is a <laughs> little bilboa. Is the is the species, and it doesn't fruit. Oh. The landscape architect is very clear that we All don't right. like fruit trees. Okay. We like the look and the blossoms, but not the berries. Yeah, the berries Questions, comments, comments about the three proposals. Yes. sure that you need to do the additional fenestration on the addition because I think it looks too much like the original house and I think I'd rather see the house stand alone and just have the windows with the regular trim. Um, I think moving the entrance the way you did to back to the house to move that stairway is great so that you can get rid of that huge ramp that was there and I I appreciate the fact that you shortened it and now from the street you're going to be able to see trees between the buildings. How's your time, folks? Yes. Uh, Nancy's I would also agree that this is a, a big improvement over what we saw last time. Um, you know, there's, there's always the corresponding view, and I actually like the idea of the addition looking more like the main house. To me, it looks like a cohesive um, structure that's there, and I understand that you want to make the historical building different, but I think because it is a neighborhood, um, if that were my house and I were building an addition on it, and I lived in that in this neighborhood, I would want my addition to resemble the the the, the main part of my house. So I I would opt for the 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 new structure looking more like the old structure with the with the window treatment. But yeah, I, I really think it's a big improvement. I like the entryway.
replace any material in corner boards. It had to be nine inches because there are some nine inch corner boards on the historic house. Um, this is a material that we would be proposing for the addition, um, and this would be, uh, we, we can debate whether they're, they're probably six inches, these are four inch, three and a half inch uh, piece of corner board, but this is simply uh, going to sit off, you know, it's, it's one, this is a one inch material and this is a five quarter inch material, um, and we could use either of these, but it's not, they're not high lasters, they're really just corner boards and trim boards around the edge. So they're corner boards on the right hand. Correct, correct, and there are corner boards on the main house, okay. Do you have to take any special precautions when you use man-made materials? Yes, um, we, the manufacturer recommends uh, that dust masks be worn um, when you're cutting that material, uh, but the, uh, the adhesive and the attachment is very similar to what you do with wood. Uh, the, the materials are slightly different, but it's really the cutting and there's very strict manufacturer's recommendations and uh, OSHA requirements for using it, and we've used it many times. We don't, I don't know if the municipality doesn't allow these materials to be used. Just historic district. <laughs> no. <laughs> Second. Other question? Yes, ma'am. I'm Nancy Lamb. This is pretty much my view on 194 somewhere out. And I like this view of the, the windows that look like this one with all the details. I, I guess I can repeat that. You like the windows this way, not with the rendering the copy of the original. Mm -hmm. Can I say that for now? Okay. I appreciate uh, what you've done. Thank you. Yeah. Um, in the um, redesign of the addition, was any thought given to, instead of making it shorter, making it narrow because while looking at it from this view it may not look as imposing as looking at it on from the front view it still protrudes in front of the garage and has a heavy sense to the property so my question is was that given any thought so uh, the question is whether we looked at turning it the other way. John, if we go back to a plan, a floor plan, first floor would be great. So the question was whether we looked at making it narrower as well as shorter. And while we Not did, necessarily and shorter, but just narrower. So it yes. Uh, so we <coughs> spent more time looking at pulling it away from the barn to give the barn more breathing room uh, and to lessen the mass and the bulk of the building. Uh, one of our constraints is uh, the corridor, the stair, and the stair were required because of the two-story building to have two means of egress from the second floor. And so if you add up the width of the <coughs> stair, the width of the corridor, and the width of the stair, that's exactly the width of the building. So we, we have squeezed it in that direction, that would be north-south, as much as we feel comfortable doing it. And the more we squeeze it, this way, north-south, the longer it gets east-west. And so, since the largest dimension of the building was east-west, we spent the most energy trying to pull that down, uh, as opposed to trying to squeeze it from north-south. And so, um, while it does sit, uh, the, the barn corner is here, you know, that, this amount of breathing space, our old, corner was there and we moved that corner way over here so about 20 feet uh, in that direction further from that corner giving you much more breathing space between so I appreciate the question but uh, the answer is we're ultimately and this classroom um, is down uh, as, as small as we feel comfortable uh, and we've added the, the folding partition between these two classrooms thinking that there may be a time when that classroom is just too small for what's going on in a particular session and that we need that, that uh, flexibility in the room. But this, is, this, is, this classroom will only um, be able to accommodate 10 children and parents. And so that's smaller than any of the other classrooms 
and the more we squeeze it, we can't squeeze <coughs> we can't squeeze the handicap accessible bathrooms. We have about a, a very little amount that we could take in that corridor, and there is nothing that we can take out of either of these stairs. There is economical in square footage as we could have. And just to follow up, I'm in the camp of actually having the detail on the house, mainly because of the addition, mainly because you have the detail on the house and the garage. So it would be contiguous amongst the structure, as opposed to yes, no, yes. Uh, Anne. Hi, Anne Glover. Um, I'm very pleased that you pulled that house away from the barn because that, to me, that whole vision is just too congested. Um, I like the unadorned windows on the addition. And I'm pleased that you removed the entranceway on the addition and were able to accommodate the handicap accessibility by removing that ramp. I think it takes away a lot of the overwhelmingness of the project. I'm still marinating on all of it, um, but I am uh, impressed with the changes that you made. I'm Gina Snyder. I live at 11 Jadam Terrace, and uh, it, I uh, commend you for the hard work you put in and shrinking it down. Um, and um, I think, anyway, I, I know that landscaping is not part of it, but I really would like to encourage you to think of some of the new stormwater uh, collection and some of the more natural green infrastructure uh, when you do go to sort of uh, change the actual landscape as much as you're going to. Thank you. I think with no further input, perhaps it's time for our considerations to discuss. Okay, we're going to move uh, to close the public input at this particular point and get into the discussion ourselves and with uh, criteria. Uh, thank you very much for your input. Okay. Any other comments or questions about that? I haven't had a lot of time to digest it, I realize that. We haven't either. First of all, I'd like to publicly um, thank you for all your efforts and cooperative 
Spirit. Um, also, for the record, I would like to um, note that we have received communications of certain dates.
this, we have a right to be here. We responded with enormous effort to both uh, neighbors with respect and to the commission. But when you tell us that you've got to have a little addition, you're saying we can't use the early intervention program, it's not for I want to stand up and say I'm not saying you can't be here. First of all, I have several friends that have kids go through the program, and I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is within the confines of the bylaw, I need to be satisfied with the bylaw, and that's my responsibility. So the net result is, when you talk about an addition that's being coming down, how much real addition is going on, I need the time to look at that and think about that. And that's where I'm at. And, and, and we never suggest that you don't have to, of course you can go by the bylaw, but the bylaw um, is somewhat open-ended. It doesn't, so for example, if the bylaw said you cannot have an addition this size, then we'd be into the process of challenging the gallery of bylaw. The bylaw doesn't say that, and that's why, by the way, that's why we showed the house next door, that's why we did the block area chat and the floor area chat to try to bring some objectivity in addition to what we think is a visually beautiful project. And I will point out the reason the bylaw doesn't give you those things is to give the board the responsibility of looking at and giving it parameters as to how it feels about that. That's how I feel about it. Is that it doesn't it doesn't want to lock in. If you read the uh, national parks from the internal uh, development criteria they specify it becomes a, a a choice type thing whether something will fit or not in the district and that's what I'm dealing with. Okay? It's not purely size, it's whether it fits, whether it fits right. It's I gotta reemphasize. It's me adjusting to where it fits in the Bible and whether it looks right for the district. That's the key. That's why the bar in Bible is written in that format. I, I understand. All I would ask, and I'm, I'm not acting with Mr. Blood, all I would ask is that you try to take into account the church, for example, and other <clears throat> other existing structures in the very district. Just a couple of points.
old building to the streetscape in general. And an applicant for uh, a permit of applicability, the applicant bears the burden of establishing that the proposed work is not inconsistent with the historic nature of the district. I think there's one thing that we can agree on. We'll start with something we can agree on. Um, that the historic structure will remain in situ and uh, is going to be preserved, which meets our objectives to uh, preserve and protect significant architectural buildings. So we've got one of them. Um, general concern is um, the overall design, the proportions, the detailing, the maps, the arrangement, texture and material, exterior architectural features, um, which I think were well explained today, but um, they're certainly more compatible than uh, the previous one. Um, and they demonstrated the Context between adjacent properties as well. And in the previous earlier statements, uh, when they compared size to the Middle School, I thought that was inappropriate because um, it's certainly not visible from some.
fit in with that and be able to, to uh, vote on it as a whole. I don't think it's necessary to you know, take a vote on each condition. As long as they're all discussed. As long as it, you know, you're satisfied. Right. Some, of them, some of the conditions, you know, like the one that says you have to, you have to uh, uh, build the addition in accordance with the drawings, um, you probably don't need to debate that. You probably need to assume that. So, uh, um, so uh, well, obviously the ones that that, you, that raise any particular concern. Uh, hi, hypothetically, if we were to deny a certificate of appropriateness, then uh, if they were to apply for a certificate of hardship, we would have to list. Um, our reasons and conditions for the denial of the certificate of appropriateness. That's correct. I personally still have to work very hard at the ratio of how I feel about that. And it's kind of going up until we get better. Okay. That's where I'm at. I'm at a point where I need to look at the numbers a little bit better, digest this. It's, there's a lot of good, uh, but I still need to look at that bylaw, go back and forth with it, and make sure that I have a responsibility. Okay. Um, I have um, two questions. Um, one is that the certificate of appropriateness is not really going to be an issue until we have a certificate of appropriateness. We would like to have a little bit of information about the materials you brought. Uh, is going? Yeah. And I'll just, before you start, right. one of our concerns in the district is that we uh, try to uh, minimize man-made materials. And I know this whole project is going to be a construct of man-made materials for the experience, I don't know. And so that's something we're going to have to grapple with, too. Um, and while I'm shooting off my mouth, I'll just say that um, the, my sense of the design uh, alternatives, uh, the simpler the better, because then, uh, based on the Secretary of the Interior standards, which a lot of people don't understand, but we work with all the time, so. Um, Thank you, and I agree with you. We like the more simple, uh, from an aesthetic standpoint. Just sort of as they come down the pile here, um, this is the architectural shingle that's on the barn. Uh, we have a little disagreement as to which color it is, but we'll get the exact color match. We actually believe it's either this one or one of the gray colors. It's not the light gray and it's not the dark gray. It's in the middle tone. But this is what's on the barn, and this is what we propose to use on the addition. And the house is just slate, so that's a solid. Correct. The slate this is a sample we have of the slate that's on the existing house. It's uh, this may not be a perfect match, but we know we can this is a very close match, and we do believe that the roofer who would do this slate repair will find as good a match as there is in the add of modern materials. But that's a that's a true slate that we will need to use on the existing house to make some repairs. <laughs> this is a, a piece of, uh, this is the exposure that we have that varies on the house between four and a half and five and a half inches on the historic house. Um, this is a red cedar. Uh, which is what we would propose to use on the historic house where we need to replace material. Uh, we would save what we can depending on what the underlying material is. Um, and if um, if we brought up, uh, we took up some photographs of the existing conditions if you wanted to look at those, but you can see that some of it's quite deteriorated. This is the... Excuse me, but is this a natural material? Yes. I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 It's a this one. Yes, sorry. Shut up. And this is the, um, the hardened plank material that we propose to use on the existing.
existing on, on the addition. Um, both would be painted. Um, and we painted this, this color is nothing other than we painted, uh, we cut the material down and showed that we could get the same exposure of the original and that when they're both painted at a distance at, and actually fairly close up, if you don't touch it, you probably wouldn't know the difference. Um, and while this is a man-made material, there is wood product in it. It's cement and wood product are the largest components and then there's a, there's a, uh, a resin that holds it all together. But it's actually quite, it's quite substantial and one of the reasons that homeowners and contractors like it is it actually lasts. And just feeling two pieces that are exactly the same size, there's no comparison in their weight. There is more material in that new product which will last uh, and takes paint beautifully and will give the appearance of the historic platform. But the um, artificial rain, yeah, but it's actually better not to have the grain showing. Um, if, if, we, if we had glued it down to that piece of cardboard and you looked at the back, the back of the texture, the texture doesn't look very good. And if you're going to paint it, which uh, we, we all do, uh, when you paint it, you want to use the smooth and you get a nice finish to it. If you use the grain and they don't know exactly how it's going in, you will get patterns in the grain. Oh, correct. Uh, yeah. Look okay. at the house on the corner of uh, Countryside, where we have them put on the patio board, and uh, look at the ridges of Countryside. My experience is also that when you use paint, um, it will be very hard visually to distinguish between what's the natural material and what's the man-made material. Um, and that this, while the manufacturer says you can use it without painting it, we always specify that it be painted because I've never had a, the, the caulking material that goes with this. Similar to the caulking material you would put on a natural material, it's never the same color. And so you end up painting it to get rid of the nail head and the caulking works as much as anything else. And no one would ever leave a clabber. I don't believe you'd leave a natural clabber house unfinished. Certainly not in New England, but I don't think you do it um, and it is red cedar, which is always interesting to me that uh, white cedar is what grows on the east coast, red cedar is what we build houses with, and it grows on the west coast. But it's the way we build houses all along because the white cedar just doesn't hold up. Well. And you have to use a special paint on the uh, man-made materials, correct? Not a special paint. There's a primer, but it comes factory prime. So essentially, we'll use a very similar paint uh, on both products. It's not a special paint. No, it's the primer is a special yeah. primer, but not a paint. Okay. As we talked about before, when we go to restore anything that's missing or deteriorated on the existing house, we will use uh, a natural material. Uh, this happens to be uh, a piece of poplar, uh, which is very common trim material. And then we, on the new house, uh, on the new addition, excuse me, uh, these are two different products. Um, this is the, the hardy product, which is a little bit lighter weight, uh, and, and this is the fiber cement, which is exactly the same material as the clabber um, and is uh, a more durable, and again, it's the same problem. Uh, this is a smaller piece, but the weight is quite a bit different, um, and, but the, the ability, the stability of the product and the fiber cement the product is much greater than the, the PVC product. In, in this case. So that the um, sunlight and heat uh, does not destroy this product? No. Well. This is a very tried and true product, the direct sunlight, um, especially painting it white uh, or as close to the white of the existing house as we can. Um, it, in light colors, it has a bit very stable. Well, I'm looking at none of these uh, artificial material is going on house for the barn? Correct. Okay. And in fact, the porch rail of the historic house is a vinyl product. And we would be looking to replace that with wood. Uh, to, we're we're going to do so much other restoration that that handrail will need to be reworked anyway. Um, and so we would use a natural handrail and then paint it in that case. Also, what, what is your time frame of this whole thing, assuming that there's a going. We, we assume that start to finish 
the construction period would be less than a year. It's determined on when we, if we receive your approval, uh, we'll need to go back and be sure with CPDC that we haven't made any changes that, that require us to visit with them. Uh, they have a little bit of latitude that small changes can be made. Um, whether they deem it that way or not, uh, what we've suggested it will be up to that group to decide. And then we need a building permit. And so the start date is very much determined on hope to get started this summer and we would hope to be done within a year. Yes. Yeah, to minimize the impact on the neighborhood. Correct. <coughs> um, you mentioned CPDC. Uh, would you be going in for alignment? Sorry. Yes, that's what you would be going in for. And presenting the, the new... Town Council may be able to answer that better than I. <laughs>
So that's what I have. Joe Lupe, 167 Summer Avenue. Uh, I like the reduced size, and I don't know if it's the picture, but the amount of white trim on the addition is out of character with the barn or the main house. You got so much white trim, it's not funny. It, it, it just doesn't blend in in my, my eye. Part of it is the rendering. I'll admit it's sort of a bright sunlight on that uh, on that rendering, um, but we do have the ability to the existing house has a nine inch corner board, which is a very exaggerated size. This is nine inches, and we're very used to seeing four and a half to five and a half inch trim. And if it was a condition of the board or the the prerogative of the board to to do a five and a half inch trim on all of this, we would be happy to do that. We, we probably have exaggerated it in this rendering. And you're also seeing at each of these locations in the way it's at an angle. So you're seeing that nine inches in two directions. So it does look very heavy to me as well. In the original building, it's because of the Italian style. Yeah, the nine inches on the the, the And the existing trim on the house is rather interestingly built up of lots of pieces, um, making me wonder how original all of that trim is. I know that lots of it is, but uh, when you really get up there and look at it, that fine black bull nose uh, is really a questionable detail. I'm not sure in 1918 that, that, that was the detail. Uh, it's what's there now, and we're happy to, to work with it. But, but in fact, uh, there's something about it that looks more contemporary in the way that it's built. Uh, just, I'm not used to seeing something that bull nose like that. Um, that's, that's Generally speaking, there's a want not to take a historic structure and pull it back. Say, well, I know what was on there, and pull it back to that. So the net result would be, in my opinion, better to keep what's there. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, we would. But that's that's why we believe that the more simple trim of the addition is appropriate uh, because of how detailed. Um, I'll throw out a couple of comments in reading the uh, uh, Department of the Interior uh, National Parks. Uh, I feel much more comfortable about the, the design even as it is here. Um, and the connector, they seem to want this connector. It isn't part of me, but it's part of what is highly recommended. But uh, again, it is, I feel good about that. Um, Reducing it even that foot, that's 10%. That's you know, close to 10%. That's really good. Um, but I feel that the, uh, the simpler design is better than the you know, 80 to match. I also would point out that I feel the board in accepting artificial materials is making a move. <laughs> We're trying to make that move because it's certainly easier, it should be financially better for you. It says in our bylaw that we should look toward more natural materials. Well, it's really tough. And I think that's hard to move in this new district. I mean, they're still feeling that there's new district. And those are only my opinions. Um, would there be any chance that once you start restoring the original building, you're going to find unexpected surprises which would inhibit your restoration? Um, we expect we will find unforeseen surprises that will complicate our restoration, but that's the case in any restoration or renovation of an older home. Um, there are some, some very deteriorated corners of this house on the exterior. You, you go and really poke at the existing windows. I'm, I'm concerned about that, but we've worked on other projects with restorers who can deal with those historic sashes, and they're going to do more repair than we would like, you would like, 
but we're going to have to put the windows back together in a way that they will keep the weather out, and they don't today. I think that's one. I think that um, if, if we brought up some of the uh, some of the granite around the base, uh, we've scrutinized it, and there's some movement. The structure engineer is not concerned about it, uh, but I think that's another place where once we actually get into it and take the shed and the breezeway off, that we will have to do a little bit more reconstruction there than we would hope. But we're committed to doing that. And so when you restore, as you all know, when you renovate or restore a building of this age, you're going to find things that you did not expect. We have poked at it quite a bit, and we know a lot about it. It, it wouldn't be a case of, oh, God, we can't do this. We can't say it. Yeah, I would point out, I think within our bylaw, or under the uh, certificate of appropriateness, there is a phrase in there that says, if you hit substantial problems, they have, if they're going to change your plan, they have to come back. And, and, and I think that regardless of uh, uh, people's feelings about this owner coming in and doing this project, one of the advantages is there are more resources to do it right than I know the average homeowner might have or be willing to spend on such a building. There is an opportunity here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This commission has uh, dealt with primarily smaller um, projects that are usually in residential in scope. And so this is putting a lot of pressure on this commission to follow the guidelines, the rules and regs, and the bylaw to get to a point that we will be able to issue a certificate of some sort. Um, I think that's going to take us some discussion. Um, and I don't know when to have that. <laughs> Setting up for the 27th and the 29th, you told me to get the public in the 29th. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, so maybe we should look at the 27th. Was yeah. um, there another comment from you? I said two, two comments. Um, one, I do appreciate the smaller vision. Uh, but, but part of your charter is with setting, and you know, th there's a lot more green up there than is on the original plan. If you see, the green here kind of jogs in towards the house, and that's not the case. It actually, there's a lot more asphalt there. So I don't know how you do that. So I just wanted to comment on that. There's a lot more asphalt on this picture than, than it's portrayed. Uh, but the other thing is, how much do you guys have over your board, over signage? Not so much the, what the applicant's proposing, but CPDC wants a bunch of no parking signs on the on the right side of this lot. Can, can you guys push back on that or no? I'm not sorry. Got enough to handle it. Actually, uh, this group is probably the only opportunity for design review within the community because we do not, the town does not have a design review committee. So you might want to think about that in the future. state law. So there isn't any um, there isn't any latitude on that. The no parking signs, I would have to speak with your traffic engineers. I have just completed another project where we did a small discrete no parking sign and they came back and not only did the sign have to be a regulation sign, street sign, it had to have the ordinance citation on the sign. Even on private property. Even on private property. Because this is um, all fine. We're Really, that's why I was asking about the possibility of reducing those. 
we, we believe that there are four, there are eight mandated signs. Four no parking signs, which the fire department has been very precise about where they're going, and uh, two of them are fairly deep back in the property, that I would be surprised if anyone sees them other than people on the property. Uh, yes. Yeah. 
examples of previous instances of that? Certificates of appropriate. Yes. Yes, I can do that. All right. That's all. I just, I just don't want to make, I just don't want to make any, I mean, this is a bigger project than we used to.
sorry, we're, we're just figuring out that. And then you're talking about that materials uh, note that was attached to the original draft decision? I'm sorry? You're talking about that materials memo? Uh, no, no, no. The actual deci proposed decision. Okay. I just don't want that. Some I used to carry through. <coughs> Public streets, 
public parks, P-A-I-K-S, and public bodies of water. The term public way, however, shall not include a footpath, cat path, or any easement or right of way that does not constitute a public way or public street. And I, I would actually have to do some research on that, but I, I, now, that, now that you put it that way, if you ask for my instinctive answer, I do not think it would include the view from the driveway, but I'd have to take a look at that as you may want to also. Because uh, there is, a, as you know, there is a body of case law on right. public ways. Right. I don't have it in here. Well, I was just questioning because all of a sudden the building is much more visible with no leaves on the trees, but if you start picking down some of the trees, which I realize they have to do, more can be seen than I would have thought from the park. And so I have to answer, I understand that, but I have to answer a very question, as I see it, right. as to whether that matters, and I don't have an answer on the top of it. I also think the guard will so, still be walking in the back side of our dish. Okay, wow. Well, um, it will certainly block some of it, but I, uh, that's the reason why I was asking the question. Did you make it, did you, is there something in here that, that presents the view from the they did a slide which showed some. I yeah, believe we did one slide. Three sides. Of all. Yeah, three all sides. sides. Three sides. We're talking about four sides. The fourth side. The fourth side faces the house. We we have all three exposed elevations, and and the little piece of the fort that you can see okay. in the drawings. Okay. I believe I I understand the question. This is the rear view facing this building. Okay. This is the view facing the neighbor to the north. Okay. And the barn fits in about here. I can see. Correct. About That's right. That's the old house. That's the old house. And then this is the piece that you see from the front. If you look straight from the sidewalk back, you see this piece, and there's a window there uh, that's missing. And then this is the view to the south. So we've gone all the way around the building in that. That's that end. That's the back facing the barn and this Parker Street. Yes, this is the gable to the south and that's the gable to the north. And that's the kitchen extension of the existing house.
constitute a public way or a public street. And the problem here is really what we have is a driveway. It's probably, such a check has probably never been accepted as a public way at the town. It's not included in our you know, check of 90 times and that stuff. But it is kind of a street. It is open to the public, so maybe not necessarily. No. No. But on the other hand, how critical is this to the whole decision? Is it worth doing a lot of legal work for it? Well, I mean, the whole point is, you know, if, it, if it is a public way, some aspect of the school property is a public way of finding uh, about visibility from them. Statute from Chapter 46, oh. State Historic District Act. But 
Because it, it is the law whether it's in the decision or not, it doesn't really matter. We call this 
was the dressed up and C was the flat. So if you reference our option A, then we'll, that will be tied to a set of drawings that we Is that, is that consensus of the group? Is that, if you're, if you're going to include it, you've got to include it in the group? Well, I think that's, uh, we're going to start to break it into pieces. Because we, we know that there was some from the public. There was some comment. And, and we can live with either, so I guess if you could give us guidance. Well, that's fine. That's okay. That's, that's, okay, so we, obviously there's not a big vote taken, but the no. consensus around the table at the moment mm -hmm. is that if they were going to approve something, they would approve A. Okay. Yeah, that's the simple one. Simple so one. Not, the, not, not the, more, the more matching one. That's, I, I, I don't know if it's. <laughs> and again, I think that's a difficulty that us and the public might have is that copying it is, is better. I mean, it is a matter of current. Actually, the consensus from the day we're still here tonight was for the A option. It wasn't unanimous, but it was not a right. consensus. Slightly earlier. So we'll support that decision at this point. No, I'm just correct. Right. No, I think, you know, I think your, your rules of regs actually contemplate this kind of thing. Yes, right. exactly. Did you want to say something?
because we have North Carolina working with different things in Columbia. Is it right for the district? And that's exactly what they said. We have to decide is it right for the district. And so they don't give us a, well, you can't do it at 25%, you can't do it at 30, you can do it at 120, whatever. They don't give us those numbers. We have to look at the pictures, look at the design, look at the materials, look at all the different pieces. So that's the part that's hard for us right now. We can't review your use, so you can only speak of what's going to be done there. So we don't know what you can do with what we can do. So we just get to our school and just say, you know, we're going to be setting an appropriate They are sending us for the block coverage that requires to take residential uses, the fact that we have the largest of those, and by far, we are by far the largest industry. And we're trying to get to those groups right now. We can also look like including the aggregated house that's immediately to the north, which is existing and larger in mass and larger in length than we have. Which is part of the problem with this approach. It's not so well narrowed. I understand that I think I heard you say when you were having trouble hearing that this school may not be a relatively good comparison, but it is right there. It's an acre parked on the mountain at a fence that will pivot over right next to the street in acre, which is the acre as well. So I just want to emphasize how much effort we need to really consider those things about how this site is in the neighborhood. Being very comfortable that this site is a comparison, it really is fair to the ground. And to Mark's point earlier, I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I don't know who else is going to address this. I